man, it is so refreshing to feel like I've gotten my money's worth out of a Marvel comic. This is Nerdicane. I'm coming to you with another uh, comic book review. This is Wolverine number one. Yes, I know we all hate that Marvel reboots and reboots and reboots and reboots, but this one's actually good. We'll give credit where credit's due. Um, there are the people behind this. There's also one of these, it, it ties in with the um, the current X books. So a little later in this, you'll see like the their uh, their page layout for the credits. It's kind of neat. Um, this, this really has two stories in it and they're sort of both mysteries. Uh, and they're, they're completely separate from each other. The first one is Wolverine. He's waking up and he's just completely torn up and it's kind of neat to see, um, this artist, they did a really good job of the healing process that Wolverine goes to when he's really, really torn up. Um, the cool thing about this is Quentin Quire is dead. <laughs> I, I, know, I digress, but I know you guys know my thoughts on Quentin Quire. Absolutely hate this character. Um, but it kind of goes through this, this situation where he wakes up and he's murdered his teammates. Uh, he thinks he's murdered them. Here we go. This is the, oh, there's the people in it. And, uh, Kid Omega. Why do they call him Kid Omega? He's like, Probably 30 by now. Are you going to keep calling him Kid? Uh, but here is credit where credit's due. Benjamin Percy. I think I've read a few things from him. Uh, Adam Kubert. No introduction needed. Um, everybody on here is top quality except Jordan White. But I'm pretty sure Jordan White is just... This is like Hickman's, this is like Hickman's baby. Um, I'm assuming Jordan White is editor because they need to put somebody on editor. And Jonathan Hickman is just like, yeah, handlebar, handlebar mustache, sit down. I'm going to do this. Uh, at least I hope that's what, what's going on. It's kind of cool because it shows so many different sides of Logan. It shows um, even a change in him. In this first sequence, he's playing hide and seek with, with some of the kids on Krakoa. And it goes into another thing where he is sort of the, the mentor again of, you see an adult kitty pride who still comes to him and still wants to talk to him and still uh goes out of her way to to and she's asking him to investigate something uh i'll skip ahead no, no, that's just skipping stuff for the copyright gods but that's a segue into kitty pride and kitty pride's talking about okay we're the ones we're the marauders we're the ones who are in charge of the shipping of the drug from krakoa uh but she's like, shipments are, are coming missing. Shipments are going missing. And we need you to investigate this. Uh, so he sort of assembles X-Force to, to do this. And it jumps around. It's kind of cool because they go to this. They go to a part of Russia. They use, uh, oh, I forget what his name is, Gateway. Um, they use Gateway to get there because the portal to Russia, if you know, if you've been reading the X-Books, is completely fortified. Uh, by the Russian government, but they go down into Russia to start investigating and they go into the middle of a cult that worships uh, mutants. But, it, you know, it kind of, no cult ever goes well, you know? I mean, just ask the people at the Branch Davidian, just people, the people who follow Jim Jones, people who spend all that money on Scientology. Uh, no cult ever goes well. And then what this is, is their sort of obsessed with consuming the pollen and they want to consume the mutants as well uh they think it's going to turn them into some sort of hybrid creature but getting past that but you know they have to fight that and and deal with that situation getting back to the investigation he's going through russian contacts and people in russia he knows would be uh places to get information you get Wolverine the detective. Wolverine does so many things. He's very much, you know, he's like Batman. Batman does so many different things. He's the superhero. He fights cosmic entities. He acts as, he acts as a detective. You know, this is what makes this character, you know, it's, it's taken a long time to make this, this brawler, this, this assassin, uh, as he started out, into something more. And this, we're seeing the culmination, and this is it in this modern age, in this, in this age of, of comic books, 
the fruition of Wolverine, you see him as a completely fleshed out character who you can do a lot of different things with. And too many of the writers uh, nowadays take that for granted. And that's, you don't, you don't see that in this. Nobody's taking Wolverine for granted in, in, in this book. Um, so there's another entity who is a pale woman. They say it's a pale woman who is causing, uh, she's a, she's a telepath because one of the things she likes to do is she likes to take over people's minds and make them harm themselves. So I don't know if this is going to be a new character. Um, there's also this guy who's a CIA agent um, who is investigating the same thing. So their paths are definitely going to cross. Um, that's all I'm going to show you that one. This is a recommend. I recommend you get this. It's really cool. Um, this is the next part. The next part is called Catacombs. Uh, it's a completely different story. It's a completely uh, different, like I said, a different story. Has sort of a different vibe to it. But also, once again, you're sort of dealing with, we're seeing Wolverine the detective. Wolverine, uh, he's part of X-Force. He's part of sort of the CIA of Krakoa. Uh, Omega Red shows up. Omega Red, if you haven't been following this, he's sort of uh, rebelling against what Krakoa is. He still needs to kill people in order to stay alive. That's how his power works. But he gets caught up in a deal with uh, a vampire who basically cures his problem, but puts a bomb in it, as, and it puts a bomb in him as well. So he's, he's manipulating him uh, as he gets back into Krakoa. He tries to get back in, and he goes there under, like, under a truce, trying to get back in and Wolverine knows what's up you know Wolverine knows what what kind of dude this is he's like no um so what happens is Magneto basically stops him from killing Omega Red and sends him into France so that's where the portal came from uh to investigate and it, it winds up investigating vampires there's a character here I don't know who she is I don't know if she's new she's um I don't know Mrs. Mrs. Catholicism Captain Captain Jesus? I, I don't know. But she's sort of a vampire. She, she's sort of a vampire hunter, I assume. Um, she has a really cool weapon. This is a UV gun. It shoots ultraviolet light, which basically melts these uh, these these low-level vampires. Uh, that's actually that's actually a pretty cool thing. It's an interesting design as well. Um, yeah, I guess that's an. They could have done a little bit more with it, a little more, been a little more tactical. I guarantee those are called holy hand grenades. Um, but I, you know, there's there's a Monty Python reference for you. But all of this, the colors, the color, uh, the color palette on this is really good. The story's really good. It hooks you in. It does. It respects. Uh, in both of those stories, it respects the three act structure. Your beginning, your middle, and your end, and your well, sort of the end. It's not the end because both of these are going to be, uh, both of these are to be continued. But in just this one issue, you see the three parts in it. You see, um, okay, you see backgrounds. You see that's you know I've said a lot of times that's one of the ways you can tell if if Marvel actually gives a damn about the comic that they're that they're producing. Are they paying or taking the time? to draw in properly the backgrounds, to do the angles properly, to do the perspectives properly. And that's what they're doing in this book. They got some good artists uh, on this book. So I would definitely, like I said, I think I said before, this is, where's the price? A little expensive, $7.99, but I paid eight bucks for this. No part of me feels like I got ripped off. This is a really cool book. Don't buy it because it's a number one, uh, that's, you know, Marvel reboots their stuff so they can sell a number one because they know they get a sales boost when it says, oh, Wolverine number one, you know? But buy this because it's a well-made story. It's a well-made comic book made by people who give a damn and Jordan White. Uh, but this is, I, I highly recommend this. This is also sort of a throwback cover. If you're an old head like me, you might remember uh, Wolverine number 50, the original Wolverine series. When it got to issue 50, naturally, uh, it had a cover that was sort of like this. Uh, a little different, had a little more, little more tearing to it. But 
That's a really cool idea. That's a really cool homage to it. Um, it gives credit to, there we go, Chip Kid. Designed by Chip Kid. Gives credit to that, to Chip Kid. Um, yeah, go buy this. This is this was a really good comic. Uh, and it does, it does, the, it does two, of the real, two of the things that a good comic should do. It entertained me. I don't feel like I got ripped off for the money. And the most important thing, it hooked me and made me interested in issue number two. So I'm going to go buy issue number two when it hits the shelves. That's all I got for this one. Go out and buy it. This is definitely a recommend. Thank you for watching. Uh, hit a like, hit a subscribe, and you guys go have a good day. All right? Bye.